Hi, I'm Marnie. And I'm Maddie Bruce. And today we're talking about keeping secrets. Am I? I don't know what you're Everyone has secrets. They can be big or small. They can make you feel really excited or they can make you feel really scared. What kind of secrets are there, Maddie? So you can have secrets about a surprise birthday party or at school if someone fancies someone. And those can be really exciting. Yeah. It can feel like something that you've got, yeah, yeah. You've got to look forward to and things that like that. Yeah. What are the other types of secrets you can have? I mean, there are bad kind of secrets. Um, for example, if someone confides in you, if they are maybe feeling low, um, if something is going on with their relationship that they're not happy about, things like that. And it can also be something that someone's sort of making you keep as well. Yeah. So it could be like maybe a relationship that someone doesn't really want you to share. And yeah. that could be a bad secret. And it, I mean, it doesn't make you feel good. It's not a good secret to keep. Exactly. And what sort of things should you do in that situation? If it makes you feel really, really uncomfortable and if you're having, you know, sleepless nights about it, I think that's when you need to tell, you know, an adult or a teacher or someone yeah and it might feel like the opposite thing yeah. that you should be doing yeah I mean I've personally done it I have had to break my trust with a friend because I was genuinely concerned for their behavior I actually had to call the police on them because I was worried about them doing something and they were so 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 angry with me but I just thought you know it's worth it they can hate me right now they can you know think whatever about me but as long as they're safe then that's what matters when you're really worried about that person's safety, yeah. that's when you exactly. know you really need to get help. Yeah. And you know, that can have a really big effect on you as well. Yeah, I know. For keeping that secret. I know, because obviously if it's your friend, you don't want them to hate you. And you know, especially with my friend, they were in a very low place and they couldn't quite see that I was trying to help them. They just thought, you know, I was against them. Why wasn't I letting them do what they wanted to do? I was worried about this person's safety. They had made it clear to me that they were very suicidal. First of all, I told my parents, because that's the first thing I was like, what? what do I do? What do I do? And it was my parents that helped me call the police. And it sounds like your parents were there to kind of give you that outsider's yeah. perspective. The yeah, exactly. That you needed to call the police in that moment. Yeah, because my parents have been there with me, with my mental health problems. It's, it's different because it would usually be me being that person, you know, that the police needs to be called on. I mean, that's how, my my parents have you know they've done that in the past they've called emergency doctors to ask for advice but like me being in that situation as well was really really different so when you're going through a tough time it can be really hard to actually tell someone yeah so I actually didn't tell my parents they ended up finding out by accident um, you know because I think a lot of people when they feel that way they're so 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 scared to tell their parents because you know they feel ashamed it's this huge secret um, I find especially with self-harm and self-harm is involved it's something that people really really don't want people to know which is like kind of the opposite with what people think about self-harm but um, as soon as my parents did know I actually didn't want them to help me at that point I was really really low and I didn't understand why my parents wanted to help me I just thought why can't they just let me be like this obviously looking back at it I'm very grateful that they did take me to hospital at those times because um, I wouldn't be here today if you don't feel comfortable talking to your parents or carers who else could you talk to so I think friends definitely or close family if you feel more comfortable talking to your auntie or whoever and also teachers at school. Exactly, it can be really good to find that person outside of your family or your friends that you can talk to who aren't in that situation. So whether that's a counsellor, whether that's a doctor or even Childline as well. And when you're telling someone your secret, what's it important to remember? Make sure that it's someone that you trust. And also, if you're not ready for that secret to be told to anyone else, I think it's important to let them know that. I mean, you might just be telling your best friend because you want them to come along to your first doctor's appointment with you. When I was at school, I think my best friend was the only person that knew I self-harmed. She didn't tell anyone, although she was worried about me and she encouraged me to tell other people and to get help. She kept her word and I really, really appreciated that. How can you cope if someone tells your secrets? Instead of, you know, maybe being really angry with them, sit back and think, okay, like, what was your reason for going to them? And try and understand from their perspective. 
Definitely, because again, it could be that they are doing it because they are worried about you, because they care about you, and they thought that that was the best thing to do. Yeah. So if you're going to reach out and get support from someone outside of your family and friends, like a teacher or a school counsellor or a doctor or even Childline, how do you know if they're going to be able to keep your secrets? I think in each instance it's really important wherever you go to ask them about their confidentiality policies because they do vary. You have the right to ask and I know so many people that have for example been to the doctors by themselves when they thought that their parents were going to have to come with them or that their parents were going to find out and they haven't and it's all been okay. And if you want to know more about what stays private with Childline you can find out more in the description below. And it's important to remember that talking to someone is a really positive step. Yeah, I think actually just confiding in someone shows that you are kind of ready to open up and talk to people. And I think for me, that was the first step in my recovery with mental illness. There's always someone that you can talk to when you feel ready. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.